when we update the state in a React application, we expect to see the changes on the screen immediately. But in many circumstances, the data to update the state may not be immediately available because we may have to fetch that from a server, which often takes a certain amount of time. Now, in the interim, we often show a loading indicator on the screen, which may be not necessarily a very good user experience. So instead, can we somehow defer the update to the state and remain in the previous screen for a slightly longer period of time until the data becomes available and then immediately switch to the updated screen? Now, this kind of support is available through the concurrent UI patterns, which are going to be part of the next version of React. Now, uh, we will examine with an example to see how we can now use the experimental features available under the concurrent UI patterns in a React application today. To help you understand this, I have implemented an application which uses the concurrent UI pattern. Let me demonstrate the application to you, and then we will discuss exactly how we can make use of the concurrent UI pattern. To get started, let's clone a Git repository. So let's go to a terminal and add the prompt in a convenient location. Here I am in my documents react folder. Let me clone the Git repository github.com jmupala react concurrent ui.git. And once the application has been downloaded, let's move to the react concurrent ui folder and then do an yarn install to install all the packages. And once the application is installed, let's go ahead and open this in Visual Studio Code. And at the same time, start the server to serve up our application. And once our application is up and running, let's go to a browser and then look at this application going to your browser let's type in and view the application and once the application loads then you see that we have a bunch of users we have seen a version of this application when i demonstrated the use of suspense boundaries in an earlier video now when we click on any of the users then we fetch a list of albums for the particular user which requires communication with the server and once the set of albums are fetched you display all the albums on the screen and when you click on any given album then the photos that form part of that album will be fetched and then shown on the screen now if you switch to another album notice that we are still persisting in the previous screen but notice that before the uh, photos are fetched, we still remain in the previous screen with a small refreshing spinner being displayed on the screen until the data is fetched and then you jump to the updated screen. Let's look at it one more time. Let's switch to another album. And when you switch to that album, you notice that instead of displaying a loading spinner, we are um, persisting in the previous screen, but we are still giving some indication to the user about the fact that we are waiting for some data before we switch to the new screen. This is the use of the React concurrent UI pattern um, in this application. Let's examine how we can make use of this in our React application. Going to the source code in um, Visual Studio Code here, uh, let's take a look at our application. So uh, let me open app.js file here. And in here, in the app.js file, we are querying the data from 
um, a server. I am I'm using React query library for uh, fetching data from the server here. Now, in addition, in the components themselves, um, as you would notice in the albumless.js file, you see that when we are fetching data upon click of any of the items here, instead of immediately uh, transitioning, we are using some um, function call here called start transition. What exactly is the start transition and how do we make use of it? Now, in order for this to work, we need to use the experimental version of React at this moment because the uh, concurrent UI pattern is not part of a stable React release yet. Hopefully, with the uh, new version React 17 coming, this will become part of React 17 in the future. But in order for to experience the use of these experimental features, I have installed an experimental version of React uh, here. Now, in order for you to understand how to install this, I'll show you in the uh, documentation how we can install the experimental version of React with the support for concurrent UI. Switching to the browser, in the documentation, under the concurrent mode, we will uh, look at the documentation on adopting concurrent mode. And here, one of the things that we are suggested to uh, do is to install an experimental of, uh, version of React as uh, given in this command here, npm install React at experimental, in order to be able to make use of this. Now, uh, obviously, an experimental release is not something that you should be using in any production React application. This is only for the sake of your understanding and testing that we are making use of it. Now, once you install an experimental version of React, then you need to enable concurrent mode. To enable concurrent mode in your index.js file, when we uh, create the React DOM, we specify the React DOM as follows. So we'll say React DOM create root and then render app there as shown here. And this is essential uh, for us to use the experimental version of React. So how exactly do we make use of this concurrent UI pattern? So the idea is that we have transitions in our um, application where we are moving from one state to another state. Now, what we do is that we will wrap the set state inside a transition or where you are making changes to the uh, state, you wrap that into a transition uh, period. What exactly is a transition? So whenever you are transitioning from one screen to another screen, we can make use of a new built-in hook called as the use transition hook. Now, the use of the use transition hook enables us to get access to um, as you see here, uh, once you have set up the concurrent mode, then we import the use transition from React. And then we, when we call the use transition hook in our application, we will uh, be able to get a start transition method and an ease pending Boolean value from this use transition hook, which enables us to set up the transition from one uh, screen to another screen. Now, um, we'll see the use of it in the code in a short while. In addition, the use transition takes a uh, configuration value, which is the timeout value. In this case, this timeout is set to 3000 or 3000 milliseconds. So um, the transition itself takes about 3000 milliseconds. And within this period, if your data is not fetched, then it'll fall back to the default handling through the suspense uh, boundaries that you specify so that it will display the loading spinner at that point in time. Going back to our code, in our code, you see that uh, in the albumlist.js file, I am importing the use transition hook. The use transition hook, as uh, we see here, has to be prepended with the unstable underscore option because this is an unstable version of uh, uh, the feature available in an experimental version of React. 
So we use the unstable prefix to it. And in our code, you see that in the function itself, we call the use transition hook here and it returns, as, you, as I said, a function named start transition and a Boolean variable called is pending. And here I have set the timeout to 10,000 milliseconds or 10 seconds, which I intentionally did in order to prolong the duration for the transition so that you can actually see it happening on the screen. And also, wherever you need to fetch data. So in this case, I am using, uh, as I said, uh, the React query library. The Re React query library allows me to prefetch some data. So in this case, when I am doing a state transition, I am switching to a new photo album here. And so when I'm switching to a new photo album, I need to fetch the new set of photos. And I do that by using this prefetch query here so that the data is prefetched in here. And that is wrapped inside a start transition here. The start transition, as you can see, is the function that is returned by the use transition hook here. Now, inside the start transition is where we will set up for the change of our state. In this case, we are fetching the photos first, and then after that, we are changing the state of our application here by setting the album ID to the new value that we have selected here. So this transition here enclosed inside that start transition means that if some um, data is being fetched, then the transition itself takes, as you see here, up to 10,000 milliseconds before it actually causes the change of state. And in the interim, my uh, fetching of the data that is uh, initiated by this uh, call to the prefetch query here may take place and the data might arrive to my application in time that by the time I switch to the new state, my data is ready and so the user interface can be immediately updated. But of course, it also means that there will be a short delay before the user interface updates. Now, if we do not make a change to the user interface within a period of time, then the user experience gets disturbed. So that is the reason why we may want to display something on the screen just to indicate to the user that the transition is happening, but we still retain the previous screen uh, in the browser so that we, we don't end up with a loading screen and instead we just defer the update to the screen for a short period of time. Now, in order to keep the user informed, we have the second value returned by the use transition hook called as the ease pending, which is a Boolean variable. Now, the ease pending is set to true as long as your transition is pending. And then once the transition is completed, then the ease pending will be set to false. So I can make use of the ease pending inside my code itself as shown here. So what I am doing here is that if ease pending is true, then I am displaying a refreshing on my screen just to give the user the indication that some uh, update is going on on the screen. So that is what allows me to display that refreshing spinner on the screen. So this way, we are able to handle transitions from one state to another state on the screen. Now, the question might come, how much should you set, out the, uh, set the timeout value to be? Typically, you set the timeout value to be something larger than a typical uh, amount of time that it takes for you to update the state here. So in this example, since we require the data to be fetched from a server, which typically in my um, example takes about 5,000 milliseconds, which also I have deferred it for a long period just to be able to illustrate the idea to you. Um, so I have set up the timeout to be about twice the value so that by the time the state transition uh, takes place, my data would have been fetched from the server here. So thereby I am masking the fact that 
there is uh, a delay in, uh, in uh, fetching the data from the server. Now, another way that people have been doing this earlier is to use some form of animations in order to hide this fact or to use a loading spinner, but those are ne not necessarily the best user experience. Instead, if you can simply persist on the previous screen for a short period of time without causing too much of um, uh, disruption to the user's view of the screen, then that is a better option available with this concurrent UI pattern that will become part of the upcoming version of React. So we'll just wait until this becomes available for us in a future version of React. Now, as I said, this is an experimental feature and I would certainly suggest you not to make use of it in production version of your React applications. Mm -hmm.